everyone, welcome back to JD in the Duffel Bag podcast. And today I am joined by the queen of everything, Miss <laughs> Maya Jammer. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. I'm just going to move the mic up there. I thought it was pretty low. Part. Originally, we were going to do cling cling together. But oh, cling cling. It's only water. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of pretend some kids are doing it recently and they're like, cling cling, mother lover. Oh, that's a good one. PG. Because I was thinking that, how would you do PG? But Lover. How has that spread so much? I don't know. You know, I didn't even invent it. Like, I, came, I was inspired by. Um, you know, what's his name from that film? And he's got the glasses and I hate McLovin. Him. Oh, oh what, what movie? You is know that? who I'm on about though. McLovin. Really, yeah, McLovin. Him. I don't know if it was actually was it McLovin. Bad? No. Maybe. Yeah, bad, yeah, I think so. I don't know if it was McLovin or like the other one that he plays in a different film where he's like, let's get away some <laughs> like that. And then that came to cling cling with and now it's a thing and everyone every weekend sends me pictures and videos that. of them which is kind of cool I liked it when you were in Dubai and these <laughs> people found you <laughs> mate I don't, they were Italian they definitely didn't know what was going on <laughs> but I'm like if you're going to buy a shot you've got a cling cling and yeah so. what's the movement now yeah also with your face masks as well I yeah. love that I, yeah. even, I went to LA a few months ago and I was like do you know what I'm going to get a face mask and when it's like 40 minutes till landing I'm going to put it on so then we get off the plane and how fresh. was it it was amazing. Did you feel refreshed after? I did, yeah. I d- well, do you know what? I didn't know up until about two years ago. My mum was like, you know, you lose so much moisture when you're flying on planes. And that's why you've always got a bit of a dry face when yeah. you land. But I'm quite oily anyway, so I'd always be really excited by not being like a greasy mess. <laughs> and then I realised all the moisture's getting sucked out of me. Mm-hmm. So, whack it in. So good, because the, my worst thing, you know when you land and you go to like the toilet in arrivals? Yeah. I look in the mirror and I'm just like, what is that? Ashy. <laughs> so ashy, I know. <laughs> It's like a transformation. You go to bed or sleep or the plane, you wake up like, <sighs> but the face masks do save it. Well, I was putting it on, I could see people staring. I was just like, we're removing the stigma. Yeah. I'm trying to get it away. Even now, they still do look at me a little bit, but I feel like people are kind of getting used to it. Yeah. In Asia, it's massive. They do it on every flight. Do they? Yeah. But they're way ahead in the skincare game. Oh. They they know stuff. Are you going to bring your own face mask? I would buy your face masks. Yeah. Well, it's not even a secret anymore because I've kind of teased it on my story, but I am making my own ones oh currently, gosh. like right now, which is kind of scary, but kind of exciting because I've never released something just on my own. Yeah. But it makes sense. Like, I know which ones are good. Yeah. I know what does well, what doesn't. And I'm like the consumer. So, yeah, they I would definitely out. buy it because you've inspired me to even buy a face mask to put on the plane. So, yeah, I'm glad. I, I have this one that I make at home and it's um, honey and oats with water. Nice. And you boil it and you put it, it looks like someone's been sick on your face. Oh, a little vomit. And every time I'm on my story, like with the with the face mask on, everyone's like, why have you got porridge on your face? I'm like, it's really good for your skin. <laughs> the natural ones are amazing. Yeah. If you can be bothered to actually mix them, they're probably, yeah, they're probably just as good. I know. But I've got, I don't know, I realized that they charge so much for these expensive ones and the mm-hmm. ingredients aren't that crazy. No. So I've got the expensive ingredients for... An affordable price. Everyday prices, honey. So line. yeah, I top tip that. facial in a pack, hopefully. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. I'll be wearing it. Good, I'll send you some actually. You can do, the, you can do a review while you're oh, playing yeah. games. Oh my God, yes. It. Good. Face mask and gaming. Do you game at all? Um, no, I don't. I'm kind of a letdown. I used to really, really love Sims, like heavy, heavy addicted I, to Sims. That's one of my favourite games. Yeah, in school, I'd, I remember running home and being like, I need Sims. Yeah. And I got all the cheat codes and got all the extra, like the vampire Mother package. Mother load to give them loads of money. Mother load. <laughs> it kind of ruined it for me, though. It made it so much more fun, but it ruined it because yeah. I was like, now I don't have to grind. I just... Do you know what I do is I start them with zero dollars mm. and I make them like, they don't have a house or anything and they've got to go out and make something of you themselves. You hustle them. Yeah. Get them on the grind. Right to riches <laughs> I love that I don't think I had the patience when I was in school but I need to re-get it actually I kind of miss it's really good and what else did I like a Crash Bandicoot oh I love Crash I was a fan of back in the day and maybe that's it I'm kind of good at racing games though like the car like ones like Mario Kart and stuff which is weird because I still can't drive there's a Crash Team Racing really really good game yeah it's basically like Mario Kart but for Crash Bandicoot I need to get on it now I feel like I went through an anti-game stage because I was just working loads or whatever yeah. I was like when am I even going to have time to game and then now I'm like actually I want them in my life. They're so fun. I'm ready. I've got a Nintendo DS though. Oh, you do? A DS? Or mm. well, the old one? Wait, is it a DS? Switch. That's it. <laughs> Shows how much I know. <laughs> I've got that one. The one where you... Yeah. yeah. I got one. I got literally got mine yesterday. They're amazing because they, they work on the plane. That's what and I'm that's... saying because I'm flying to LA like, and I'm going to play it on the plane. They are perfect. And you can play against other people on the plane as well. Oh my gosh. One time when we were going to Australia... I think, who was I playing against? Yeah, like gigs and someone else on the plane, <laughs> like across, just watching their reactions. Like, yeah. Was it not really loud, like competitive? Notes? I think we had headphones in, but I, I did I win? I think I did win. Oh, that's good. I think I beat gigs. Don't quote, well, yeah, quote me. He'll confirm if it was not. <laughs> <laughs> so you beat gigs at what, Mario Kart? Uh, yeah, Mario Kart races. Yeah. 
and where you can attack each other at the same time. Oh, like, you like so. that is Mario Kart, isn't it? Yeah, you, yeah, you get like the bananas and the shells yeah. and everything, and yeah. extra special little bombs and stuff. Oh, I'm not very good at Mario Kart. We'll no. have to play against each other, and we'll see. I'm down. I'm actually <laughs> up for it. I've, I've big myself up now to say I'm really good at it. I so mean. we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully. So you're literally like the queen of parties. You throw the best parties. You've been to some, haven't yeah, you? Yes, so been... I came last year to Halloween. Yeah. And I was Daphne from Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I love it. Do you know what? For ages, I've always been like, before I did my own, there's never any sick Halloween parties mm. in London. Now a lot more people are doing them, but like two years ago, the first one was two years ago. Yeah. Like there wasn't really anything going on. And I was like, I want to fully dress up and go in. Yeah. And like you could go to a club night and some people be half hearted or you get maybe a bit of blood on your face. But I was like, no, I want to do like a Heidi Klum style UK version yeah. of like a sick Halloween party with everyone. And so me and my manager were like, yeah, okay, let's go for it. Did it. And everyone went in so much with the costumes. I was like, we have to make this an ongoing thing. And now it's like, I feel like if I don't do it's it, like I'd let people It's like the event, down. yeah. Yeah. Everyone's like, when it's Halloween, oh my God, are you going to Maya's party? Are you going to Maya's party? Mate, this what one are you dressing was, as? Yeah, it was a big one. But I want to do it. I think now I've got to open it so other people can come and it's mm -hmm. not just people I know. Because yeah. every year online, everyone's like, oh. So like members of the public. Yeah, and do like a tickets thing and mm -hmm. then maybe do it like, half and half or I don't know make it like a big grand yeah. event because people get FOMO is it hard organizing a party then I'll be so honest I have like some of the ideas but then my team are like the ones that Just go together. It all together yeah my manager is like mama jar <laughs> slash I can do everything in the world woman Izzy bigger up and she she took the wheel on this one and it was also with show parties which is like my friend Max and mm -hmm. Dan and people so they they helped too but it was start of me being like Izzy I want to do a party and then she's like okay and I'm like okay can we have this 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 and then she's like yeah and then I will send out the guest list but I'm just rubbish because I don't have an official list mm -hmm. I end up just going through my recent DMs and my recent texts and, out, and then yeah. being like okay but I'm going to change that because people get forgotten and yeah, then people kick off. <laughs> people right, offended, right. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, ah, oh, I told you to pop up. I'm rubbish. But Aww. yeah, I'm working on it. I love the McDonald's as well. Yeah, we've got like our kind of bond now, me and McD's. <laughs> I've been slowly like pushing them out there for a while. Not that they need any promotion, but I've just always loved McDonald's. And so after like award shows or whatever, there's been a few times where I've been papped with like, a McDonald's yeah. bag. And so they're like, oh Maya, we've DM'd a few times. On my 25th birthday, I was like, okay, I want like the ultimate sweet 16 that I never had because I was broke and couldn't do anything <laughs> when I was 16. And then I was like, can we get McDonald's? Is that possible? And they basically have never done it in the UK before, but they, they it made sense because yeah. I genuinely do like them. And they were like, yeah, okay. Was it when the spicy down. nuggets came spicy up? Spicy well. nuggets van came down. Amazing. And, um, yeah, that's now. like the ideal thing at a party because sometimes you know when you're out and you, you've been drinking or just like having a good time yeah. and you sit there and you're like do you know what I could do with is a McDonald's or just McDee's. something to eat and all you want to do is get in the cab and just try drive to a McDonald's I've left parties before in the past to get McDonald's yeah. or like to get junk food. And so I'm like, have it there. Then there's no excuse for anyone being Indeed. like mashed up on the floor. Yeah. Have your nuggets, continue the party. Such so yeah, hopefully that's a brand collaboration for life because love them. I love McDonald's, <laughs> big up. Um, I loved your mermaid. I love the fact that you went to the radio the next day oh dressed God. as your mermaid. That's so Harley Willoughby and Philip Schofield obviously did it after the Brits one day. Was it the Brits or NTAs, National oh, yeah. Television Awards? And they and were they, just laughing, weren't they? Yeah, like and that. they came in. They hadn't had any sleep. They did straight through crew. Nick Grimshaw used to do it all the time. Well, this is the thing. And I'm like, now obviously you've got to be a bit more careful with everything and like very PG. But it's real life. People exactly. do have to be in that situation. And to c confirm, I did actually have like an hour sleep. Hour and a half too. Why are you going to take all of it off? <laughs> put it back on again. It would have been so long, exactly. and I would have looked so much worse going there with like half washed off because I wouldn't have had time in the morning. Yeah. Went to bed really late because people came back to mine, and it was like either lie flat on your back with your wig and your contacts in, or try and do a half jobby and, yeah. and look dirty. So I just went for it, and also I think it kind of added to the theme of the building. I was like on Halloween. Yeah, this... and also people relate to it because. Who's not done that in that way? I mean, yeah, I've definitely done straight through crew many times in life. I just haven't documented it before. And um yeah. I think people loves it though. Do you know what I realised? Yeah. You know these slow mo vids that Rihanna's been doing? Yeah. Which are iconic. Yeah. You've done it first. I did do it a while ago. <laughs> I didn't know if I invented it, but I did I've been doing the slow mo bops yeah. down the road and So I I think 
you, you can take some of the credit. I'll take that. a corner of the credit. I mean, to like this much people. I think Rihanna <laughs> bust it worldwide and did it. Yeah, no, but it's cool. I like it. I love, I don't know, you know when you have an outfit sometimes and you can't get the shot, yeah. so you need to get the video, but it's kind of hard to find the balance between doing a video where it's just like, okay, I'm doing a video for the sake of it, mm. or like it being a bit cringe. Some of mine are probably really cringe, but... No, but yours aren't. The ones that are cringe are when they don't crop out at the beginning, you know, when they're like, okay, go. Mm. <laughs> and they're just stood there and then they're like, start walking. What like, is that, though? that bit out. Is that for added character, maybe? I honestly don't just know. Because there's a new fashion now at the moment is with photos and it's fashion to like, with your hands pointing at the photo, oh, yeah. to be like, oh, stop now. <laughs> don't take it of me. <laughs> no I know. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with the trends. There was the one where you were doing the hand behind. Oh, the traveling one. Yeah, yeah. travel bay. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, Can't I haven't yet to do those ones. I haven't <laughs> done a travel bay caption either. <laughs> but yeah, Instagram and uh, I know. I with the trends, they catch on. My thing is just do a video if, if all else fails. Yeah, now I now, for safety, will do like a picture of my outfit and then a video and then you work out which yeah. one you put up after. Which one's better. Yeah. My one of my favourites of yours. When was it? Was it Park Life? I think it was in the summer, and you were literally like strolling. Oh, um, Manny road. on the map. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, I love. I that. think my accents are my favourite thing to do. But then you've got to be careful you're not offending people. So Manchester, they approved me. They yeah, said that that was, that was a, really a decent good one. Accent. Yeah. No, Manchester accent was approved. I'm working on my Australian one at the moment. Can you give us any? Uh, right. Sorry, I don't want to be an absolute. Oh, but I really love walking down the beach and talking to strangers. It's actually right. good, you know. Subtle. I was Did going you, to have. Have you before. ever watched like Summer Heights High or yeah. things like that? It kind of reminds me of that. Summer Heights High was one of my favourite shows when I was in school. We used to I watch it at PSHE. It. I'm not sure why, but she'd always fling it on. Did you I'm watch like, um, Jamie Private School Girl? As well? Yes, Jamai. Jamai. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, so hilarious. No, I love all of it. Fuck you, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. I can't remember the characters' names, but that is a one. Yeah, because he, he brought out a new series on Netflix. Recently. Yeah, I loved that. a little bit left, but still fun. Yeah, it was still well. um, it was different characters, but I like Jamie Private School Girl. Jamie, Jamie, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's a G actually. I want to meet him one day. Same. Is he from Australia? I think so, but I don't know if he's like New Zealand or Australia. Like I know they're like super similar, so yeah. people get offended if you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing Same. Australian accent. They're like, no, that's Kiwi. So you've got to be careful, but I always wonder if people from like like America or something can tell the difference between, for example, like a Scouse accent and a London accent. Gosh, they must be able to. Yeah, I think so, but then maybe not because when you go to America, they're like, "Are you Australian?" Like they don't. It... Oh, yeah, I've been asked that before as well. Bloodlines. I know it's nothing alike, <laughs> but cool. It's like I wouldn't be able to tell like a Chicago accent to uh, New Orleans. Mm, it's true, but you could tell probably at, like Atlanta from New York. Maybe. Atlanta, yeah, 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 New York pizza. Talk to me, <laughs> those ones. I'm, I'm You're working on my good. accents. I mean, that was what I used to do in school in drama. Like I'd Did always you? be someone with an accent. But yeah, as you get older, you're like maybe it wasn't as good as I thought it was. Were you always like loud? Well, not loud, but like talkative. Yeah, no, I was always loud. Yeah, I think my only like skill set was like performance stuff. So like music, dance, drama, anything where it wasn't using your brain as much and it was more doing yeah. like fun creative yeah creative that's the word I was a creative in school and I think because my like family were always like well Maya try your best in school but you're probably going to do something in that world anyway so they oh, weren't so, they so strict knew. yeah okay. they weren't really that strict on me with stuff she, my mum would try and make me get my head down loads and I wasn't a bad student mm -hmm. I was just not really that interested in like academics yeah. and stuff I was more interested in doing all the other stuff um but I just, what did I get for GCSEs? Like five Cs. So I just got into sixth form, <laughs> like just scraped. And I remember the lead up to all of it being like, well, I'm going to be on telly anyway. So this is all just me, 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 And I don't know where, maybe it is my family where I got that little juice of confidence from. Yeah. But I think I always kind of knew that I wasn't going to do like a normal job forever anyway. Well, I think it's hard with schools because obviously they have to teach a certain curriculum. Mm. But how do you cater for students that ne aren't necessarily like academic, but yeah. they're still talented in other ways? So yeah. you have a big personality, you were creative, and it's it is hard. They did a by. bit. Of, my school was it specialised in performing arts. It was a normal school, okay. but it was like you know they all have their yeah. topics that they're better at. So, so you were good at drama. I was like drama. I used to dread it because I I used to be really shy. Yeah, and I didn't talk so it's weird that night I've got into like presenting and stuff but I was completely the opposite so I was so quiet so it's interesting that you were just like always the opposite always knew, yeah mm, I don't know I think a lot of it comes down to like just how you are as a person anyway mm -hmm. and then like stars are you in star signs I know of like I'm a Libra 
So I don't, I don't really know, know what too that much about Libras. I'm a Leo, oh, but like yeah. everything I read about a Leo is mad accurate to myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I think it's just a Leo thing. And then I meet loads of people in entertainment world, and they're Leos as well. Yeah. So I'm like, half, half of my friends that do uh, TV are also Leos. Leos. Yeah, I think it's just in you. You're super confident and like very like loud and proud and like self-assured yeah. look at me yeah yeah i used to want to be an actress originally before i knew what presenting was i was like i want to be an actress what, you, what kind of movies did you want to be in uh, like action ones like tomb raider and like fight people yeah. and do that kind of like badass situation mm-hmm. um and then i i've spoken about it quite a few times i basically skins used to come to our school what well, happened twice came to our school to cast for their new series mm-hmm. and so i was like yeah right in bristol ready gonna be famous, managed to get to the last two out of like all these thousands of kids and then I didn't get it. Then I was like 15 at the time and I told all my friends, oh yeah, I'm gonna be famous now, this is it, I'm off. And then it just didn't happen. I remember feeling so (laughs) yeah, just like, oh man, maybe acting's just not for me. That I kind of pushed it to the back of my mind and then discovered presenting and was like, yeah, this is what I wanna do now. But now I'm like, I've just got an acting agent again. I was gonna say, like you could still do movies. Yeah, well now I wanna try it. I haven't actually done any, well, I'd, I've done something that's secret that I can't speak about, mm-hmm. acting-wise. So my first little acting debut will be out soon, depending on when this comes out. But I want to try and do films and stuff now. I could see you, like, in a Tomb Raider. Have a go. thing is, now, now I've been, like, so myself and put so much of me out there. I'm like, maybe no one's going to be able to see me as a character because they're just going to mm. be like... It's interesting, smart. though, because there's so many... Well, there's quite a lot of personalities or music artists that have then transitioned into acting. Yeah. Like, Lady Gaga has done it really well. Amazing. There's a thing, I think like, I don't know, musicians especially, because they act in their music videos and they mm-hmm. do like, they're performers, so they're yeah. always in like some kind of role. It naturally comes, like it's a natural transition yeah. to act in. Whereas with a presenter, you're literally like yourself and you're talking about yeah. you. Yeah. It's true, but there must be like some days where you don't feel like yourself and then you have to be like, right, I've got to put on my it. face. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, maybe just not as a loud version of myself, mm. but I am quite like, consistent in my behaviors yeah so when so you did sick form Mm -hmm. were you still in bristol at this time yeah how was it in bristol bristol's sick i love bristol i'm such a like bristolian advocate like i love it um i only really moved for work otherwise i think i'd still be here Mm -hmm. be there but it's just the best place to grow up like it's got a mix of london kind of vibes but then it's like more chilled and everyone kind of knows each other like smaller version but it was just fun like we had such a good time growing up my house was kind of on the way to the cent- centre of Bristol. So mm-hmm. it was like the pre-drink house. And everyone would come before and like get ready. And my mum was super chilled out. So she'd like let me have my friends over oh, a lot. Good. And yeah, I loved it. I had such a good time. I it have... wasn't that different to Skins, to be fair. <laughs> I've only heard, well, I've only heard good things about Bristol. Yeah. I have a few friends that live there now. I've never been myself. You'd like it. But I grew up in Norwich. So it's kind of like, a, it was like a small city, but it was similar. Everyone knew each other. We had one friend's house. We'd always pre-drink at because she lived near the centre. Yeah. It's nice. Though. I, I don't know. I didn't grow up in London, so I don't know what the difference is. Yeah. But I, just, I always feel like if I had kids, I'd want them to grow up in Bristol. Oh, so you would move back? I don't, I don't know if I could move back, but I would want them like to have <laughs> yeah, a similar ideally. Opinion. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice and safe and like, Community vibes, but still party. Yeah. Yeah. So how, what, what age did you move to London then? Um, I moved officially when I was 16. So I'd like applied for colleges in London oh, okay. after my first year of sixth form, which I didn't even finish. I don't, yeah, I, I like dropped out of sixth form like a couple of months before the end of my first year. And then applied for colleges in London because I wanted to do more performing artsy stuff. Mm-hmm. And I had a few auditions in London and like I'd met a boyfriend in London. And I just felt like if I want to chase my dreams, I'm going to have to go there. Like nothing really that big was happening in Bristol. So I applied for all of these colleges during the summer holidays, got into some, and then moved in September. Wow. Yeah. And I was off. So where did you move to? Did you did you know anyone in London? Obviously, you. So I had her. like the boyfriend's family there, and then and friends, and I knew them a little bit. And then I had one family member that was, I mean, she wasn't in a good place, so I shouldn't really have moved in with her. But I didn't really have any other choice, yeah, and it was one it was of those expensive. like, <laughs> yeah, like you either go back home to safe Bristol and like be with your friends and family and probably have a really nice time or struggle in London and live in this house where like you shouldn't really be there, but 
you cannot afford anywhere in London mm. to pay rent. So I just ended up working like three different jobs and like grafting, spending as much little time at home as possible and as much time working so that yeah. I could afford to move out and rent at 16 in massive London, not really knowing what's mm. going on. But I don't know, I always talk about this and I'm like, I had some super Saiyan energy back then because I don't think I'd be able to do it now, mm -hmm. but I was fearless. Like at 16, I kind of just was like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it. If it doesn't work out, I'll go back home. Yeah. But I don't have the option. And also... I, d I'd, I kind of had in my mind that like I told everyone I'm going to like chase my dream now like I don't want to come back unless I've done yeah. something to yeah to make you see that I did you know what I mean yeah because like, if you say it then you've got to do it that's why I'm like yeah. I'm like I can't fail so now that I've, I've stuck said to it, my word <laughs> yeah. yeah like I, just, I don't know I've gone now I don't want to come back and be like oh it didn't work out mm -hmm. so I, I was determined around that age I think when you're young out. as well I don't know, because like you're 25 now, I'm, yeah. I just turned 28. So it's like, I hit a certain age and I was just like, I don't know, when I was younger, I had more drive. And mm. I don't know it's because if I didn't know the consequences behind certain things, like now, before I do stuff, I proper think about it and I'm like, oh, but what if this happens and this happens? Yeah. Whereas when you're younger, you're just like, no, I'm going to go out and do it. It's because you haven't had the no's, I think. Mm. Like you haven't had the, the setbacks yet properly. Yeah. I think I was kind of naive, but in the best way possible because I was like, well, yeah, you go to London, you work really hard and you'll get rewarded when you work hard. Yeah. Like, I'm not working all these jobs and not going to have something good come out of this. Mm -hmm. And that was my constant mindset. Whereas as you get older, you're like, oh, actually, something can go wrong there and you might not get that and da 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 da, da. Whereas I just didn't know that side of it for the first year at least. Yeah. And so it just made me a savage, basically. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get this job. I'd meet people that are like, what do you want to do? Like, who did I meet when I first met, moved here? Poet and... David Vijanic oh, really? and stuff. Yeah, they were like some of my close friends. How did you meet I was them? like 17 at Jump Off because oh. I used to work at Jump Off. So I was a runner there and kind of like helping out making teas yeah. and they'd let me use their cameras on lunch breaks and I'd make my stupid and hidden camera pranks and all this stuff and harass people on Twitter. Like, can you watch one of my videos? And then I met uh, Poet and David through that kind of world and just being backstage at Jump Off and around. And mm -hmm. then they became like my closest friends and they'd obviously make YouTube content as well. Then I started working for Copper 90 and it was all like, it kind of went that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I started that conversation again, but yeah. It was just to do with moving to London. Oh yeah. We met first. And... Yeah. So then yeah, well, after Jump Off and Copper 90, that kind of kickstarted my presenting mm -hmm. career because. So where was your first, because you were at Rinse. Yeah. Was that your first no. radio job or? That was my first radio job, mm -hmm. but my first actual job in terms of like entertainment world was working at Jump Off. Okay. So I, was, I don't think I was even old enough to be in the events. I was just like, oh, grafted, like, please can I come to this? Can I do this? But yep. loved it. Like I really, really enjoyed it. And I was making new friends at the same time because yeah. I didn't know anyone in London. Because I think, I don't know what it's like, because I didn't grow up in London either. So I don't know what it's like for people who lived in London and then grew up here. Mm. But when I first moved here for the first year, it was just all about, I was going out all the time because I was like, I need to make friends. friends. Yeah, yeah. You get to London, you think, oh, it's going to be amazing. Like I'm moving to London. It's going to be so good. And then you get here and it's actually really lonely because you're like, it's such a big place. I should yeah. be out doing stuff and we don't know anyone. So 100%. I think it's such a good way to meet people, especially in the entertainment industry because it's all about building your connections and just yeah. doing as many things as possible. You have to be outside. It is, you're right, like so lonely unless you know people here mm -hmm. in London. Yeah, but Jump Off was, yeah, Jump <laughs> Off was literally like a networking event. So I managed to meet like pretty much half the people that I know now around that time. It was yeah. perfect. Like, especially in the music industry and entertainment, like all radio presenters would go there and I'd talk to them and be like, how'd you get into this? And yeah, it was it was good. I think Sad they don't have that now. I know. They it was, should do it that helped out. It's good yeah. to have like the networking. And I think social media kind of replaces a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, which you can get to know people online, yeah. but it's a bit more genuine in person. Yeah, and you can't really judge a person's personality really online until yeah. you meet them in person. Fakes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you did jump off Copper 90, then what came after that? Okay, so jump off Copper 90 came. Copper 90 was my first actual paid job. How was that? How yeah. was like the first time? getting paid for like yeah. presenting mad i remember being like, oh my god because I, I was so happy to do it just as fun just like, fun, as a yeah. hobby and i enjoyed it so much that it didn't feel like actual work and it still doesn't really mm -hmm. um but my first big job for copper 90 they took me to brazil when i was uh, 18 wow to cover the world cup so i was there for two months and that was with hyundai as well so it was like a proper big branded job mm -hmm. I remember I'd just broken up with my ex-boyfriend just before and it was like this big like, oh my God, I'm leaving my normal job behind. I'm starting this new presenter world. I'm going to go to Brazil and like kill it. And when I come back, I'm going to be a proper presenter. 
and it was just the best time ever. Even when I look back on it now, from all the trips that have happened since, like it's probably one of my favorite trips ever because yeah. it's just like Brazil. There's never going to be a World Cup like that. No. And poet and David was out there as well, and like it was basically holiday with football and street parties, and then a little bit of work in between of work. and fun, fun, fun content. <laughs> so yeah, that was sick. And then when I came back, I started working for MTV. So that's when the ball like properly started, started rolling. rolling. Yeah. There's always like one sort of event that then kicks everything yeah. else off. Was that definitely it for you then? I think so. And I think it's because I had more time because I'd left my part-time jobs yeah. then and it was like, right, I'm actually putting everything into presenting mm -hmm. now and I can do the extra shifts and I got an agent when I came back as well because I'd start getting like actual money and not yeah. just like doing free work. So, yeah. What do you think about, um, so some people that push the movement of obviously when you do a job you get paid for it like mm -hmm. when you when you go to a grocery store you buy the groceries mm. how do you think in terms of obviously you've done a lot of free work when you first started yeah. I've done the same do you think it's just part of the process of getting on the ladder I think so yeah I know now I always see tweets online of people like get your money straight away and I'm like yeah you, you should be paid for your work mm -hmm. but then when you're first first starting out and there's always someone, especially in like desirable jobs, like what you do, like there's going to be so many people that want to do the same thing. And unless you yeah. have experience, it's hard for someone to employ you and pay you like an experienced person's rate for somebody mm -hmm. that hasn't got any experience doing it. Yeah. And I think know your worth a hundred percent, but also you need to get your experience up. So do do the free jobs if you can, and then build up all your work portfolio yeah. from the free stuff. And then by the time like that big job comes, you can be like, look, I've done that, 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 that. So I'm qualified now pay me. Mm -hmm. Whereas just going in there like, okay, I haven't done anything, but, but I still want the same me. fee as yeah. somebody that's been working for two years. Like you do have to hustle a little bit, but yeah, it's just hard. Cause it's a hard balance. Yeah, if you haven't got a family member that lives in London or in the city that you want to work in, then you've got to pay rent and you've got mm -hmm. to travel and all these things. And it's like, how do I travel to a free job when I don't even have travel money? Yeah. And I'm trying to get, yeah, it's just, it's hard. But that's why, I mean, yeah, I feel like all the desirable jobs, they don't really come that easy. You have no, to push. No, you have to push. And I think that's what sort of kind of sets people aside sometimes is their willingness to just sacrifice mm. basically everything. And that's what it is, sacrifice. Yeah. I remember I just moved to London and like about 20 of my friends were going to Ibiza and like it was the first big like club holiday and I couldn't go because I had to do like all my jobs and stuff yeah. and I remember being like this is going to be one of those things I look back on and I'm going to be like you missed out on this trip but you'll be able to go back there for, for work one day and I remember just sat there praying like please lord like just to, don't let this be for nothing and then got a job like working and I'd be for the next year and I'm like see it, it happens you just have to like miss out on some fun stuff and mm -hmm. a bit of sleep and a little bit yeah <laughs> a, little a little bit of sleep <laughs> and then Nine times out of ten, anyway, you will yeah. you'll, you'll get rewarded for it. Because I know, like, where I'm from, this is like, you went to school, mm. you did your A-levels, you went to uni, then you got a nine-to-five. Like, that was that was the plan for everyone. Mm. So when I was younger, that's what I did, and then I got a nine-to-five. And then I started to realise, oh, there is other options, just because we weren't taught anything different. Yeah. And I see now, obviously, with social media and just, like, different people's success stories, that there are younger kids that or younger people that are being inspired to just not go into the nine to five and do yeah. something else. Well, there's so many, I didn't know about like half the jobs. In school, you've got like, even when you're doing your GCSEs, I remember being like, I only want to do two of these options. Mm -hmm. So I ended up doing child development, which I was never going to use in life, apart from if I have my own babies. Yeah. But it was just like, okay, well, there's just this option. Mm -hmm. Whereas I remember, when to, what job did I learn about? My little brother was really into animals, marine biologist. No one ever told me about that in school. <laughs> you can swim around with the dolphins and go and like help them out. And I was like, this is great. I'm sure loads of kids in school, if they knew about that job title or had some kind of course to get them into that, would be interested in yeah. it. But yeah, that's the blessing of the internet. Now you can kind of just search and find your own stuff. Yeah, and you can you can make a career of being a YouTuber or being a model on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, my little brother, he's 10. Yeah, 10 now, he wants to be a YouTuber. Does and I think he, all he wanna, A lot of uh, like 10 year olds that I know want to do the Fortnite and all this, because obviously loads of people yeah. winning like $3 million for a Fortnite That's mad. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. But I just think it's important for people to know how hard you do have to work, because mm. it's not like 
you quit your job and give up everything and then you get a presenting job and your life's better like, yeah you do I have to put in a lot of work I think that's another thing that comes with social media you'll just see the end result you mm. won't actually see like all the crafty struggles unless you're one of the people that document it all yeah and especially when I was starting I think there's a lot of people that obviously had no idea who I was then and then like have just seen like this finished product of like Maya does this like what does she even do she just talks and runs around and like dances everywhere mm -hmm. and it's like no I was hustling my little bum off for mm -hmm. ages just to even be able to dance around the studio yeah or like be at Radio 1 or whatever yeah I agree with you when people are like oh what just what do they even do or like oh they only got that job because of this and this. yeah yeah but and I think it's so important with social media just I know you're a really good example of just being transparent of like days where you're having a bad day or when stuff doesn't necessarily go like right because yeah. On social media, everyone will post like a big achievement and then it's like, oh, congratulations, you're doing so well. And then on on the actual reality of it, it's like, no, not every day. I'm like, some days. Yeah, it's not every day's great. Just, yeah. It is weird. It's hard though, because then you're at the same time, you're like, do I want to post a video of me like crying? Maybe not. But then I do want to let people know that it's yeah. not all easy. It is, mm, yeah. It's a hard balance. It's always it's, a gift and a curse. I say yeah. the same thing. It's like, I love social media for so many reasons. And then I also think it's the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. It's just getting the, uh, right down the middle of yeah. it. Right. The balance. Yeah. I always thought with, with crying videos, it's a bit, because like you, you go through the process of crying. Yeah. And then you have to sit there and watch yourself back crying <laughs> and then post it. <laughs> feel that, write some notes on it. Yeah. I mean, each to their own. I always say like, you can't decide how people want to express themselves yeah. or like you know critique how people want to share their emotions online but yeah I don't know if I'll be yeah I don't think I'll be crying on <laughs> <laughs> I think one of oh, I, I'm assuming it's like about a year ago you put up a Instagram story and you were just saying and I, I related to this so much and it was about anxiety and you were just like how can I go from feeling so great and then 30 minutes later feeling so bad yeah and I'm just like I that's like for someone like me or I'm assuming so many other people that was so good to see because I have the exact same issues like half the time. It's so weird though. Like I remember when we were younger, not younger, I say like in school, I didn't even know what anxiety was. Like mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was a thing or like you just be like, what would you call it? Oh, this person, like paranoid or there'd be yeah. all these words when you're like, oh, I just feel like bookie mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And like no one actually knew what it was. Whereas now obviously a lot of people are speaking about it and mm -hmm. even me learning about it myself and being like, okay, that's what that feels like then. Because I used to get the plain belly drop feeling, you know, and it goes oh, yeah. out of nowhere and everything's going fine in my day. Like life's all right. I go through in my mind like, okay, what's happened today? Is there anything to make you feel like this? No. no, but it can just still come out of yeah. nowhere. And it's understanding that like, it doesn't have to be somebody that has had the worst day ever or someone's just died or there's something really extreme happened to you. You can just have anxiety like, yeah. and appear to have a really perfectly normal life. Mm -hmm. um, it's a weird one. And it's hard because, and because I have the same thing and it's like, my life's good. Like nothing tragic has ever happened. Yeah. Touch wood. And yeah, <laughs> and then there's some days where I'm just like, what is what is wrong? Like, why do I feel like this? And mm. you're like, I should be so appreciative for everything in life. Yeah. And there's literally no explanation for this. It's natural though, I think, especially mm. the internet again, like yeah. having that many eyes on you or so many people's opinions, just like, you don't even realize that you're taking it in. Cause mm -hmm. you can just look through your like timeline or under your comments and be like, okay, someone might be like, yeah, something mean about you. And mm. at the time it won't affect you. You'll just be like, whatever, it's a troll. But then subconsciously you're taking it in and then you don't realize, but you're like, oh, that person said that about me. Maybe I am acting a bit like do. And it makes you second can guess yourself yeah. a bit but I do think personally me like this last year I've got to such a place of just like without swearing effort yeah. like where I'm just like so what at the beginning of my career I used to always think like oh I don't want to do that because someone's going to say that or I don't mm -hmm. want to be like this much myself because someone's going to judge me for being like this and throughout like maybe the more people that have been mean about me or the more like trolls or backlash I've had the less I care and it's just like regardless of what I do I've come to the terms that there's still going to be people that don't like me yeah. and there's going to be people that absolutely love me so I have to just be completely myself mm -hmm. so that if you're going to like me or you're not going to like me at least it's for the right reasons yeah. like I'm not going to at least gonna... you're being real as well yeah I'm, I can't hold back anything anymore and it's so empowering like I do feel like this is me take mm -hmm. me as I am and if you don't like it meh. so yeah that's good it's one of those things you have to experience though it's like breakups and like like having being fired or not getting a job interview it's yeah. like 
the first times the first few times it happens it's really bad and then you just like you learn the experiences you learn how to get over it and then you're just like oh i'm Whatever. maturing now. i'm still here yeah. yeah there's a there's a line that i always go to that rihanna says in one of her songs she says no pain is forever yeah you know this and i'm like it's true because no matter how bad i felt in life and i've had some proper like I always say to my friends, I don't get like little bad things happen. Like I'll be like, hey, 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 super high, super high, super high, amazing. And then it'll be like, tragedy. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll be like, super high, tragedy. And because it's been like that since I was young, I always feel like the worst I've ever felt in the middle of something being really terribly wrong, mm-hmm. that pain or that sadness never lasts that long. And I can't even connect to like how bad that would have felt at the time because you go through it and then you're cool. Mm-hmm. Like you might still have your moments and whatever else, but your worst nightmare is never actually that bad. Yeah. Because I've had my worst nightmare happen probably about three times in life, and I'm like, and when you I'm actually go through it, you're like, oh, <laughs> literally. And and then you're like, wow, humans and like our brains and how we are as people, like we're so resilient and we are super powerful. And I don't know, it's made me thankful. All the big L's, all the big horrible things that have happened, have made me like so much better of a person. Yeah. That I'm like, if they didn't happen. I'd, I wouldn't be here or I wouldn't be how I am yeah. and I wouldn't be able to be like whatever to a lot of things because I'd be worrying about the small things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you need you need big, big you L's. You need bad experiences to make you appreciate the good times Definitely. and also shape you. Well, yeah, because exactly. you get complacent otherwise and if life's consistently amazing, you're yeah. just like, la di da di da and then a tiny thing will happen, it will rock your boat. Whereas if you've had some hardships, you know how to overcome mm. them and that's the best thing. Resilience. Definitely. Yeah. So how do you deal with like, trolls and life <laughs> anyone just, how'd you do with life you, you wrote a tweet and you were like if they don't have a story they'll make it up oh how'd gosh. you deal with it well at the moment it's just gone absolutely mad like I've never experienced something like people how do I word this well but <laughs> back in the day when I used to read papers mm-hmm. like when I lived in Bristol and stuff I believed everything I read because I thought surely it's illegal for them to write like a made up story or there's some kind of rules against like just completely fabricating stuff yeah. and then as I got older or into like the industry I'd have people that I knew be written about and I'd be like they're not like that that's and, not true <laughs> yeah and I'd be like surely that didn't happen and then I'd speak to people that were written about and I'd be like no that definitely didn't happen then they've made it about, made it up mm-hmm. and then started getting written about my myself and read stories about my friends or like me and I'm like what where on earth yeah. like the other day I did tweet I tweeted uh, a Drake quote that's like these days if they don't have a story they'll make one I think it's something yeah, like that which is like that. obviously very true and then I also said like it's so mad they literally don't have to have a story. They can have somebody that could be your enemy, could be your mate, could someone be could someone something. from down the road, yeah. like someone that just doesn't like you on Twitter, could call in a paper and be like, I saw so-and-so doing so-and-so, and they can run the story without yeah. there being absolute proof. And I'm like, that is ridiculous. Like some of the calls I've had from my PR being like, Maya, did this happen? And I'm like, no, it didn't. And I'm like, are they still going to run the story? And then yeah. he's like, maybe. Like, there's not really anything we can do. Yeah. So I was saying to people, like, unless you see quote marks in a paper or in a story headline, then 9.5 times out of 10, they didn't say that. Yeah. And they will do a whole story over one quote and it will get completely taken out of misconduct and all this stuff. So it makes you scared to be like, you just don't want to talk to anyone because you're like, yeah. if I say something, you're going to flip this and it's going to be... And or even if you don't thing. talk to them because they could just make it up. And then when you don't say anything at all. Yeah. But I've got this rule with myself that I will like never respond to what a paper says mm-hmm. unless it's like terribly yeah. detrimental to me or somebody else. So... You just have to bite your lip and just be like, another yeah. one. It's not true, not about but a Yeah, they, they chat the utmost. It's ridiculous. I know. I like, in my brain, we'll see an article and I'm like, <laughs> fighting the urge to get on Insta stories and be, <laughs> do a Cardi B. True. You lot a lion? But I'm like, don't do it. Because then it just adds more attention to yeah. it. You have to literally just bite your tongue and be yeah. like, whatever. But yeah, as somebody that's quite open, it's hard because I'm like, I don't like that you're painting this picture of me, but there's nothing I can do to... Stop Literally. it. I just got to hope that everyone knows that papers just chat poo nowadays. I think people are starting to realise, though. Yeah. But I don't know if it's, like, once you're in the industry, you realise how much they don't tell the truth. But yeah. I honestly, I do feel like people are seeing stuff, like, what was it? We had Ovi on the podcast a few weeks ago, and they yeah. asked him about the story that was written about you guys. He's like, we haven't even met. Like, we met at the Love Island party, and that was it. And we didn't even speak. Yeah. Literally. 
And that was when I realised the game's mad. Because I was like, bro, I was in one place that night that they said it happened. He was in somewhere else. We never saw each other. Like, where has this even come from? I think I saw a tweet a few days before it. And it yeah. only had a few like likes. And I was just like, this is fake. And then two days later, it's in the news. But I'm just like, what is happening? It's what is wild. But then also I'm like, that's so scary that you can make up something like that when two people have never even met like that. Mm-hmm. And you can make a whole story and it can go viral and people start speaking about it. I'm like, it is scary on these streets. Yeah. You just got to hope that people do a bit of, a bit of digging. And just like know better. And know that it's fake. Yeah. And also, I suppose, worst case, you can just go on Instagram and be like, that's, that's a lie. But, but then, then that's again, a slippery slope because then you're just going to have to do it for it's everything. It's a bigger story. Then they make a story after that. And no, 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 it's crazy. I know. It is crazy. <laughs> but... They just game is the game. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have anything to write about, they'll make one up. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, read the quote marks and question everything mm-hmm. if you see paper stories. <laughs> there was another tweet that you wrote that I liked and it was, my speaking it into existence game is really strong. Oh yeah. Do you think that it's literally just when you speak something it will happen or is it because you work really hard? I think it's a bit of happen. everything, like blended into one. Mm-hmm. But I've got this, I don't know, recently it's been so mad that I'm like, am I magic? Like, I can't believe it. I'll be having a conversation with someone and I'll say, oh yeah, I want this to happen. Or imagine if this and this and this and da 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 da. And it will like exactly happen. And I'm like, bro, do you not remember me just saying? And they're like, yeah, I know. But if, in terms of work things, I think obviously you, you can't just be doing nothing and then be yeah. like, I'm going to be the next Davina McCall and then it's just going to happen. <laughs> but I think a mix of everything. I pray loads as well, but mm-hmm. I also don't like speaking out negative stuff because of how much good things happen when I speak about them a lot. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm speaking about the negative stuff, that might happen too. And yeah. it has happened a few times where I've been like, Psh, imagine if so-and-so, no, no, no. And I'm like, <gasps> I talked about that. <laughs> so, Yeah. Do you believe in like the evil eye? Because some people say like if they say something too soon before it happens, then it won't happen anymore. Um, or it will jinx it. A little bit, but then I'm like, if the evil, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Because if the evil eye is really, really real, then like anything I put up on social media that's like a little bit like, ooh, then people are going to be like, oh, at it. So hopefully it's not as real as everyone says it is. But I do think, yeah, people are bad mind. Like people are hey, mm-hmm. So. Just be careful who you tell things. It might not necessarily be them jinx and stuff, but it could more just be like them wishing unwell for you yeah. or like trying to... Rain on your parade. Rain on your there parade. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Rain on your parade. Yeah. Basically. I do, I was like, I always tell people right at the last minute because mm. then if you tell someone too soon and then it doesn't happen, I'm like, ah. Yeah, I've got a close group of friends which I'll tell everything mm-hmm. and then like extended can find out after. Yeah. But yeah. So there's been, an, do you think everything you've spoken into existence has happened so far? Pretty much. Anything I've really, really wanted Mm -hmm. has happened, which is amazing. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. But from when I was younger, like all my major life goals, I suppose I didn't maybe set them high enough because they've happened now already. Mm -hmm. Just bought a house. And then, like, I really wanted to host the Mobos. And then I wanted to work for MTV and like those kind of things that I was just drilling from like a young age have all happened. And so now I'm like, I need to set some new ones. Can I ask you an honest question? Cause yeah. I was talking about this earlier and it's like when you achieve really good things. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, my God, it was the best day of my life or like this happened. How do you actually feel afterwards? Because then it's like, oh, I've got to set new goals. Like, how does it feel when you get to that point of like when you were a child, you're like, I wanted all these things. All this stuff. And when, um, when you actually achieve them. Yeah, I don't know. It depends what it is because I've had like different experiences. Mm-hmm. I feel like after like my offer got accepted in the house, I was like, wow. Yeah, and I'm still oh, yeah, excited about that now. That's such a long now. process. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> excited about that now. But then, like, I don't know, hosts in the Mobos, for example, like, you get so excited, then it's, like, the pressure of actually mm. doing it. I was the youngest ever host as well, and it was, oh. like, mm, am I even deserving of doing this at the time? I've got to prove myself to people. Mm-hmm. And then you're so adrenaline while you're doing it, and then after it's happened, you're like, oh, and now it's done. Yeah. Like, and you either want to do it again, or you're just like, okay, what's next? And you, I don't mm. know, constantly kind of go in for the next um, Yeah. Thing, but that's when gratitude comes into it and you've just got to like remind yourself of how bad you wanted it in the first place yeah. and be like look just take a minute to celebrate I think that period it was 2017 was quite mad for me because it was mobos and then and like all these things just happened one after the other so I didn't get to celebrate one yeah so it was just like a wheeling all, yeah. yeah and then at the end of all of that I remember just crashing and being like I'm not happy and everyone around me being like Maya like what you've just done so many things and I'm like yeah but I'm just knackered tired, like I was just yeah. so tired and I couldn't celebrate those things and I think that 
like moment in my life was when like I don't know my makeup artist and like my best friends would be like you actually need to chill like mm-hmm. just pause everything forget work go on holiday I went on holiday on my own to Sri Lanka and like zend I need to do this it was so own. good yeah. Zend for a week and then came back was and was this, like... Wait, this is where you're getting the maid to take your photos? Yeah. She was yeah, a good photographer. <laughs> she was amazing. It was a guy, actually. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. I think he was a bit like, what the hell is going on? And there <laughs> in my bikini on the balcony, like, yep, different angle, please. Um, but yeah, stuff like that, yeah. not taking time out. And I took it so for granted. I'd be like, no, no rest for the wicked. Like, I'm a hustler. I'm going to graft. I'm going to get all this stuff. And I want to, like, be way ahead of my game. Mm-hmm. And then you just crash and burn out. So, yeah. like, my advice to people would be... Don't try and do it all at once and do actually take your time because you end up not enjoying it. Yeah, because I was, this is what I was saying earlier. It's like sometimes you do things like, especially with like presenting, mm. which I think is odd because when you watch a presenter as a consumer on TV, you don't really think about, oh, are they nervous? Like I've yeah. never literally thought because you're so, they're so confident and they're so like perfectionist. Mm. But actually when, you, when you're when you when you're a presenter, you're so nervous and you're like, great, I need to say everything perfectly. You can't stutter, yeah. nothing. And it's like, it's a lot, it's, it drains you. And then afterwards, like maybe with the, bo- the mobos and stuff, you're kind of just like, oh, like, and then it's that happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm always like, where's the wine? Yeah. But no, it is definitely, I still get nervous now though. I think everyone's like, but you've been doing it for so long and you know what you're doing. And I'm like, no, like stand up to cancer. I hosted last year. I remember when you did that. It's massive. Oh, mate. I was so nervous. My lip in the first link, you wouldn't notice because you just wouldn't be looking at it, but was quivering, literally like, because you're in this massive stadium. Then it's Stand Up to Cancer, which is this huge brand, like huge charity and everyone, like everyone knows about it. And also it's like a sensitive yeah, issue serious. as well. It's not just like, hey, yeah, laugh, fun and games. Like you've got to deliver like really important um, information and there's mm-hmm. sad moments. And there's all these people watching and Davina was the host before me and I was like filling in for her who's like this national treasure that everyone loves and I was scared everyone's going to be like, who the fuck, who's this, get her off. Um, so I was so nervous, like vibrating. Mm-hmm. And then after the first couple bits, you get into it and you're like, okay, I'm fine. But the first part's always the worst. hated. I was letting off little small farts. You know when you're nervous, you're like, <laughs> as you're walking. So intense. Yeah. And I'm thinking, if anyone can feel my nerves right now, they're not going to let me go on stage. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it all went perfectly, thank God. That's so good. So what what was the most nerve-wracking thing you've done? Would it be stand-up for cancer? I think stand-up cancer, yeah. Because it was just so... I'm like a little fry compared to like Alan Carr and Davina and them mm-hmm. lot. And I'm like, you guys have, are like seasoned broadcasters. You do live TV all the time. And even though I have done enough, I just, I still feel like these are like the OGs. So yeah. to even be on a sh- stage with them, I was just like, ah, this is crazy. And then knowing how many people are watching Channel 4 on like primetime mm-hmm. for five hours, it was live as well. It wasn't wow. a short show. So yeah, nervy, nervy. But then after I did that, I was like, I can do anything. Yeah. So it makes everything, like, and the more you do it now as well, you yeah. probably find everything so much easier. Yeah, and just getting into the pattern, like, I haven't done live TV in a second, but when I was on Full Music, we used to do, like, three live TV shows a week. Mm-hmm. And so when you're in the swing, you're just like, Meh, easy, live, whatever. Yeah. And you have a break. I'm about to host Teen Awards again, Radio oh, wow. 1's Teen Awards. And so that one, that's live because of the audience in the O2. It's massive. Mm-hmm. But I've got Greg James and Molly King with me. So then we oh, yeah. Would, yeah. It'd be comfortable. Share the press. And we've done it already. So that's good. Should be fine. I saw you on Jonathan Ross as well. Yeah. That, this is like, this is such a big thing that oh you my don't realise. Because like, I always go by like what my parents know. And yeah. like, when my parents, my parents are like, oh my God, Maya Jamba. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so now you know. That, that's on it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. That, that was ma- like mad. I, th- I don't think I ever even imagined myself on Jonathan Ross. That wasn't in my life goals because I just thought, no, that's for like, a-listers and stuff. But like, you are an like, A-lister. Like, no, not And quite. you talk about national treasure, but you're well no, on your way. No. I mean, it's just so funny because my audience is so young. Like the people that actually follow me and like me are all like basically my age group and mm-hmm. stuff and younger. And then you've got like proper adults that like my mum will meet and stuff being like, is that your daughter? That one, Meyer. She's <laughs> like, yeah, like even the old people are starting to know you. And I'm like, barely, just the Bristolians. But going on there, I was like, this is nuts. This is mad. And Jonathan, he's such a legend as well. Yeah. I went to his Halloween party before mine and my God, there's levels. He's his is better. But mine's more of a rave. Yeah. His just is he's got like So experiencing both worlds. Yeah. yeah. His is an experience and like a crazy world and mine's just like the proper rave. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's a good guy. That was crazy though. Were you nervous for that? Um no. I think when I know I just have to just just talk. Be myself. Yeah. I don't get nervous. It's more when I've got to, like deliver set information. I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. Uh, I did have a couple of wines before though, but yeah, he made me feel super comfortable. And you speak for ages. Obviously, they just cut up. I oh, do they? I never little knew. Little tiny that. bits. Yeah. So 
I was on the stage for like, on the chair, sorry, for about half an hour at least, maybe mm-hmm. for, yeah, half an hour or something like that. And then they just chop it into the interview. Oh. But it was good. Because who else was, was it Aaron Paul? Aaron Paul, Jack Whitehall and Iggy Pop. Oh. Wow, yeah, nice. he's like an old school rock star. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know who he was before. You didn't know Iggy no, Pop? No, I'm rubbish, oh. I know, but he was great. He was like, I can't believe you swear so much, that's badass. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm probably gonna get it all cut out, but thanks, Giz. Rock star said Americans seem baffled that we can swear after oh a certain God. time on he's TV. shocked. <laughs> well, even like Naked Attraction, whenever I go to America, they're like, I can't believe you have this show where the willies are I out. I can't believe we have this. <laughs> it's crazy. It I love is it mad. though. It's the best show on TV. So good. I mean, it's great for like body positivity as well because you mm. see some stuff on there. You're like, yeah, he's not shy. I can't be. Exactly. <laughs> I always wonder how they cast for it because I got a DM once. Really? <laughs> Do you want to go on Naked Attraction? I was like, Do you know what? I reckon most people apply. Like you've got to be a special kind of confident. You've got to have confidence. I could never do it. Yeah. No, not, not for me, mate. <laughs> I mean, in Sweden, everyone goes naked in the sa- in the saunas. That's Do about they? as close to public nudity that I've been. So you're, f- and even are you then, from I'm, Sweden. Yeah, I'm half. Well, my mum's Swedish, half my dad's Swedish. Somali. Yeah. So have you ever? Learned. Did you ever live in Sweden? Or yeah, when we were how old was I? I went to nursery there, so I lived there for like three years when oh. we were little. And my brother was born there, my younger brother, and we moved to Bristol after that. Interesting. How was what's what's it like in Sweden? Sweden. Another bit. I don't really remember, but from the pictures, it looked lit. It was very like <laughs> from the pictures. It was, it's proper seasonal. So in the yeah. winter, you get really snowy, and in the mm-hmm. summer, it's really hot. So you get to like go through the motions. Whereas in England, I feel like it's a steady mm, weather yeah. situation. Um, but fun, really clean. People are nice and healthy. Um, nice. I need to go back. Actually, I haven't been back in a few years. You should go back. Svalia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what is next? Like, what's, what's your goal? Because you, obviously goal. you've achieved, like, most things that... No, now I have so much more to achieve. Now I want to do, like, my business side of stuff and, like, release face masks and Definitely. maybe some Kling Kling merch on the way. Obviously. Mabes. I mean, after seeing what Kylie Jenner did with a Raz and Shan, I'm like, <laughs> I missed a trick, bro. I need to get Kling Kling <laughs> out there ASAP. Um, so that and also just um, yeah acting I want to try and do some acting stuff because I feel like that's really challenging for me and it's like I have to get outside my comfort zone a little Mm -hmm. bit which I haven't done in a while so stuff like that spend some more time in America just have a lovely time really yeah I think Rihanna has set like a new standard for what you can do in life anything yeah like now you don't have to do one job you can literally do anything your heart desires even a Giselle bar like act in and then be in now he's like a proper massive DJ as well and some other stuff and he's jumping on people's remixes he's doing whatever oh yeah and a musician like there's no rules at all like Spec says (laughs) so maybe (laughs) yeah maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on a track soon I can't mean why not. I saw the um on Mo's show when you did the garage garage remix. You're actually decent. See a little man. No, do you know what? Right now I've got a cold, so my voice is extra husky. But if I could sing, I would. I just can't. Do you know what I mean? Like I think if I had some kind of vocals, there would be at least five songs. You were hitting notes though. You went off. I think they might have auto tuned me a little bit. I think they helped me out because that doesn't even sound like my voice. But. Yeah, you know those garage songs where you just got someone talking over them mm. and you're like, Anna, walk down the road, yeah. take some chips, go and dance do that. in the bits. Yeah, so just talk over someone's beat. I love beat. garage as well. That Everyone or like Deep garage. House or just yeah. like club tunes where you just talk over it and then I don't actually have to sing. Well, Kim Kardashian made a song and there we go. <laughs> there, we go. <laughs> there we go. I mean, who hasn't made a song nowadays? I might as well. You might. We'll see though. We'll jump see. on like one of the freestyle challenges online. Oh, God, see no. what happens. I, I cringe at myself. To be fair, I'd have to be like a proper joke because otherwise I don't want people thinking I'm actually being serious and then be like, oh my God, Maya's trying to be like this rapper now. Yeah, no, <laughs> we'll leave it. I will look out for your song then. Thanks. I'll send it to you. It can be in the video if you want. Let's see how it goes down. So what is one of your like proudest moments, would you say? Proudest moments. I think... My proudest moment is probably just like actually, I don't know, actually staying in London when like the world was crashing around me. And I don't know, I don't think I've had one. I think it's more like stages in my life where I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm proud of you for that bit. Well yeah. done, hon. Because I don't know, my mum's always like, I'm so surprised <laughs> considering like what's happened in life that you're not a bit messed up. I'm like, I am a bit messed up, but in the best way possible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm messed up, but like, I've made a good thing out yeah, of the messed exactly. upness. So, yeah, that. I think, yeah. A mesh. 
when I always find it like when people ask those questions, like what's your most proud moment? Yeah. And it's like, you expect them to say, oh, this big thing that I did, this big thing. But it's in reality, it's most of, like the most simple thing. It's just like. A period of time. Yeah. Or, like, just getting, getting through, through something. Yeah, yeah. And just like being still. Okay. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. I think I'm in my own brain, whenever something's going on, I'm just like, look. This is so temporary. It might feel mad now, but it's going to feel blessed in a week or a month or however long. So just go for it. Life's mm -hmm. so short. Like, I'm such a believer in, like, time is of the essence. Like, yeah. don't waste any longer than necessary on any negative feeling or emotion. And mm -hmm. it's easier said than done because, of course, like, people get heartbroken and people lose people and you're in horrible situations. But, like, feel it, cry about it, deal with it, and then and let it go and carry yeah. on because... I don't know, even just getting out of the house when something bad's happening or when you feel rubbish changes everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm queen of, no, I'm going to stay in bed and eat ice cream. But as soon as you step outside the door, you're like, rah, why didn't I do that yesterday? Yeah. Everything's a little bit better than it was. So just less wallowing, if Definitely. possible. Yeah. And the world will be a better place. <laughs> Happier, positive, loving place. Oh. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me. No having problem. Thanks for having me. I've enjoyed it. I think we should do clink clink. Let's do a clink clink. Like, do you know what? I'm going to just say it because throughout this whole thing, I've been trying to hide it. Oh, I've, my I've been picking snapped. my nail. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was what, doing this. It? And then, no, it like snapped on my way. But I was like, if I don't say this, it's going to look like I'm hiding like a gammy finger. So here we go. Out and bad. My nails are scuffed as well, so it's We're good. they're peeling Ooh. off. Right, right. Cling, cling. Cling, cling, mother lover. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. It's been Alice with the In the Duffel Bag podcast with Maya, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.